have a lot more confirmation, and you can feel more confident about the thing. And I absolutely support that. Waiting for three tests, oh, great, love it. I, this is my personal style and the way that I trade, and I'm just, I'm just wanting to catch as many opportunities as I can. Whereas some of those opportunities, I don't, I don't want to wait three tests, because if I get in anyway, I'm able to capitalize on that three tests too, or you might have missed it because you waited for three tests. Nothing wrong with that whatsoever. That's just my, my own personal preference. Um, yes, yes, Jamie, exactly. I'm just not worried about the pit of drawdown. That's 100% it. So, I, and I'm also, I've also been doing this for so long that I think I am able to recognize fake outs um, or sideways movements maybe a little bit better than some people. Just because I've been trading this whole entire
and trading me, to be honest. My um, my goals for next year are going to be a lot more content. So what I'm really excited about is I'm just going to try to make this make sense and explain it to the best of my ability. But I, you guys understand, I, I say this a hundred times. I say this all the time that how long I've been trading. I've been trading for seven to eight years. It'll it'll be eight actually soon. So I'm going to have to make that transition from saying seven. I'm so used to saying seven all year that now I've got to start saying eight years. But I've been trading for, for so long, and I'm just now getting um, some exposure on social media. And what's cool is I am now getting income from social media, which is nuts. That's crazy cool. So I'm getting, you know, money from streaming on YouTube. I'm getting income from my views on Instagram. So it's, it's very neat to have, have this exposure. So I'm I'm excited to also pursue those avenues as a as an influencer as a trading influencer, but I want I want to be very transparent in, in everyone knowing that my my trading is is it's blurry. my trading is staying the same. So my my strategy is the same. The you know amount of capital that I have is the same. But if if this social media ends up you know doing really well next year and I'm able to put much more capital and make much more trades that's going to be super exciting um so i'm going to continue with with my same capital and i'm going to continue with my my same trading style and just try to try to really hit social media hard so i'm going to be trying to make as much content as i can next year i'm going to be trying to collaborate with as many people as i can next year i'm meeting all kinds of new traders new influencers so this is super cool um, a lot of companies that I'm going to partner with next year. So there's a lot that comes with, you know, social media and being an influencer. And I'm, I'm totally new to this, so I'm learning everything. But it's going to be it's gonna be very interesting to see what it does for my training, for sure. Thanks, Chris. I appreciate that. to the moon. We'll see. I mean, I'm, I'm really excited. I'm excited to work my ass off next year. So if that means making a lot of content, I mean, my trading will be the same. So I place trades when my alerts go off. It's, it's as simple as that. Um, so my trading will be the same. It'll just be me kind of working my ass off for social media, making content. Um, I, don't know, I feel like as long as I'm transparent about it and I let people know that, like, let's say, let's just say hypothetically speaking, this and hey, maybe this could happen, maybe it doesn't. But let's say hypothetically speaking, my social media just blows up like something crazy next year, and I'm bringing in like stupid amounts of income to where now I can like, you know, buy that nice car, get my first Rolex and everything. And I want to be transparent. If it doesn't come from trading, I want to make sure people know that this didn't come from trading. This came from social media. Whereas you guys can see now that the lifestyle I'm living now is from trading. My my one bedroom apartment in LA, you know, my, my nice little techie things. I got a screen mic, I got an Apple Watch, I got a lot of techie stuff, I got a nice camera. So like my comfortable lifestyle is from my trading. But if next year something crazy happens and like my social media blows up and now I'm I'm making a lot more money, I wanna be very transparent letting people know that, you know, this Rolex that I bought is not from trading, this is from social media. Or or let's say that maybe I do start making a lot more money. Which, if this is the case, you absolutely, you guys know. I mean, we all know. I'm going to invest a lot of that into my trading and having bigger positions to where maybe my, you know, my one to five thousand dollar trades that I'm making, you know, double or triple or quadruple. So maybe, maybe I do make a lot more money with my trading. So I just want to make sure throughout my entire journey that I'm, I'm completely transparent in where the income is coming in. I don't want to, um, I don't want to give people, I don't want people to under the impression that okay. I don't want people to be under the impression that you know my trading you know may be this stupid amount of money next year or whatever it may be so I just want to my goal is to be very transparent next year and just let you guys know what stocks do you suggest that will be the same 
Um, That's that's one thing that I don't want. I don't want people to think I'm faking any kind of lifestyle. So I will be very transparent from the get go. So every every ounce and every bit of content that I've made thus far to date is is all you know from my trading. So if I talk about my lifestyle, if I show trades that I've made, um, if I show my if you go to the community section on my YouTube, you can see my stats for trading. So everything and my entire lifestyle and everything to date is from my, my trading. And if that changes, I will let you guys know. Right now, I am, so like I said before, I am receiving some income from YouTube now. It's, it's nothing crazy. I've literally only got $300 from YouTube. But if this does start, you know, taking off and snowballing, I definitely want to be very, very transparent, very clear where, where the, the money is coming from and lifestyle where that's coming from so if it's not from trading i want to be so evident like i don't want to give off this fake lifestyle and be like you guys can get a rolex too you guys can buy a lambo also with trading just like this and if that's not the way that i get my income and if that's not the way that i'm able to afford these nice things i want to be clear about it i want to be very clear about it so that's that's my only goal as an influencer i want to be as transparent as possible I mean, not when you see somebody learn, you're like, you have millions on YouTube. What? How do you make millions on YouTube? We'll find out, I guess, when this season starts. Um, Pele, if you go to the community section, and actually, at the end of, at the end of this month, which will be very soon, I will post my, so I post my, my monthly, my monthly trade, so you can see all of my stats, you know, how many winners I have for the month, how many losers I have for the month. I, and I also did a mid-month check-in, so you can see um, halfway through December how much income I was making and everything from trading. So I want to be very transparent with my trading stuff. And I'm not promising anyone anything, so I just want you guys to know there's nothing that I'm promising you guys. So I I am, all I, all I like to do is just share my journey. That is really it. If I had somebody like me to look up to whenever I first started my trading journey that was transparent and you know talked about going through the losses and talked about the psychology of it 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 would have made me feel so much so much better and so much more at ease and just to see another female also in the trading industry would have given me so much hope and motivation whereas it was it was a little bit of a struggle you know coming into it i didn't know any other female traders so that is that is my goal reason that people's comments keep coming in like over and over and over again? Am I, is that just me or are you guys seeing that too? Um, no, I haven't traded gold too much this month. I think I only maybe placed like one to three trades in gold this entire month. But, um, that definitely, it, I mean, it's, it's, it's better than none. So I'm, my goal this month was to get back into gold. So I've done that. I've at least, you know, ripped the band-aid off and I'm, I am trading gold now. So. Hold on, I gotta allow this comment. Bye, Michael. Thank you for stopping by. Um, I think I am allowed to, can I set a moderator? Can someone, like, help with the spammy comments? I've never done it before. I don't know. Community moderation. Ooh. I don't know what that does. I wonder what happens if I click it. 
Um, Gary, I have never traded a prop firm, but I did talk about it in my last. I, I talked about it in my last live that next year I am going to start trading with a prop firm, and it'll be the first time ever. Um, I'm excited to see, you know, what it's going to be like. It's going to be tricky because I don't have that many rules in my own trading strategy, so now I have to learn like this new set of rule, rules. I have to learn this new set of rules that I have to abide by. These there's targets that I have to abide by, which I never I never give myself like specific daily targets. So it's going to be very interesting. Um, I have considered one specific prop firm, but I am I'm not I'm not gonna release any of the news yet until everything's kind of set in stone. So once I have narrowed down the exact prop firm, I'm gonna document you know the entire journey. Thank you, Curtis. Kid Curtis, appreciate you, my guy. But once I once I lock down to the the exact prop firm that I want to go with, um, and once I start documenting that journey, then I'll let you guys know. Um, but right now, I'm just I'm still not sure exactly who I'm gonna go with, and I don't want to talk about any other prop firms yet until I'm until I'm sure with that one. And as far as questions go about what prop firms are the best, um, you guys, I really don't. Um, I and I lost my train of thought. Oh, I don't have any experience with any prop firms, so I can't I can't answer that. Option Academy. I am not sure what your question is. <laughs> Top sell position candle broke green trend line. Then closed back above it. Why did you not purchase the candle? I am not sure what where you're talking about on the charts, but um, I can show you why I closed my position. So let's go back to trading. Okay, so you see here there is a sell. There is a sell of one contract at 7956. 7956. So I sold when the price broke out of this upward green trend line. I went short. As soon as I got in, it immediately started going against me. Or oh, against some drawdown right here. So that's something I'm completely comfortable with. Then it fell back. Really nicely. Oh, a beautiful move down. Then it pulled back. And then I was a little irritated with that and went. I'm I'm back in the red, so Remember, you guys, I got in here, went against me, fell down, um, was in the green, doing great. Then it pulled against me again, now I'm in the red. Then it fell down incredibly, I mean, a beautiful move down. And then we pulled back again, so now we're close to break even. So, trading in the one hour is definitely a, um, it's a lot of wiggle room. It's a lot of ebb and flow. You're, you know, you're, you're in the money, then you're in the red, then you're in the money, then you're, in the red, then you're in the money, then you're back to break even, and then you're in the money again. So there's a lot of ebb and flow, and what I was really looking for in this position, I was looking for a bigger move, to be honest. I was looking for something, something bigger, you know, something like this, something like this, or at least, you know, I'm just looking for something a little bit bigger. So I ended up holding this position, and as long as the price stayed below my downward red trend line, I was making money. So I could have cared less. It, it, you know, came back. It pulled back. I'm in the money. I'm in the green. I'm in the red. As long as it stayed under this downward trend line, I was completely satisfied holding the position. And then as soon as the price broke out of this downward trend line, I closed my short. So my profit, I believe, was like maybe $1,800, something of that nature, for this short year. And then I decided to take a long. So I was like, okay, now we're going long. It broke out of this downward trend line, so that's when I engage in a trade. So, went long, pulled back, um, break even, against me, break even, against me, and then finally started going off. And then I closed this long position here just an hour or two ago, and this was just based off intuition. So, ideally, I would have stayed into this long as long as it stayed above this upward green trend line. But I just have a weird feeling. And I'm gonna be honest, that is the only reason. I don't have a I don't have a better reason for you guys. That's just that's just it. Some 
comments. Training is the hardest way of making money. A men to that. Supply and demand strategy. No, not a not a supply and demand strategy. It's more of like a, a trend line strategy with support and resistance. That is that is spot on my exact strategy. It's it's like ninety. No, we'll say it's like eighty percent trend line and like you know twenty percent support and resistance. But for the most part, it's just it's just price breaking out. Um, I'm gonna have to. I've only traded corn one time, alright, give me a break. I traded it one time because it was funny and corn was trending. There was a really funny song about corn and I thought it was hilarious. I, I haven't traded corn since. <laughs> but I have continued to watch it. Ooh, do I also trade bounces? I I do, but not very often. I think I would I would like to trade off of the bounce a little bit more often than I do usually. I'm usually a breakout trader, but but that's definitely a goal for next year is to take a few more bounce trades than versus breakout. Um, Herbert, I I will start if I'm trading something new. If I'm trading a new instrument, let's say that I am I'm going to get back into trading flat. I will start at the biggest time frame I can possibly get, whether that's a monthly, whether that's a weekly or daily, I will start out in a very smoothed out time frame. I will find as many lines of support and resistance as I can. Not really as many, but I will try to find significant lines of support and resistance, and I will try to find significant areas of trend lines to place on the screen. Then once I do that, I will move into a, maybe I'll go from a daily to a four hour, and then on the four hour, I'll draw a few more trend lines and a few more areas where I see support and resistance, and then from there I will move on to the one hour, and then I'll place my trend lines on there. So it's when I'm trading something new, I will try to get a, a very zoomed out time frame and an overall idea of the direction of this new instrument that I'm trading. And then once I have gotten an idea of the overall trend or the overall direction, then I'll start moving into a closer time frame, the one hour, and then I'll usually just stay in the one hour time frame. Since I've already drawn my lines on the daily or the monthly or whatever it may be, then I will start drawing my lines in the one hour, and I'll usually stay in the one hour and draw my trend lines from there. And what I do actually is I will almost, I won't color code, but I will kind of code my trend lines to where the thicker trend lines that I draw on the screen are going to be from a more zoomed out time frame. And I understand that when the price gets closer to one of those thicker trend lines, I understand that that trend line is very important. It holds a lot of weight. This trend line was drawn in, you know, maybe a daily time frame, maybe a four hour time frame, whatever it may be. But I understand that if the price is getting close to or breaks out of one of these thicker trend lines, it's, it's a big deal. So I need to be paying attention. Whereas if I am in a one hour time frame, If I'm in a one hour time frame, I will just continue to draw my lines in the one hour time frame. So I hope that answered your question. What is the difference between oil futures for seven thirty to twenty three versus CL one? That is a great question. Thank you, Michael. I appreciate you. Thank you so much. Um, so, what is the difference between the February contract for oil and CL1 explanation point? So, CL1 explanation point is the continuous contract for oil. You can see all of oil's real-time data from start to real start. Okay. Whereas, if you are in crude oil February 2023, that is the current contract. So, you can't 
cannot trade the continuous contract for oil. So that is the difference. So when I want to see all of oil's data, you know, everything from start to finish, I want to see an overall view of oil. I'm going to look at the continuous contract for oil, which is the CL1 explanation point. Or if you're on TradeStation, it'll be at CL. So it's just the continuous contract. You get to see all of its data. And if I want to trade crude oil, I have to go to the current contract for oil. So right now, the current trading contract for oil is going to be February 2023. I hope that answers your question. What is the most harmful thing for your trading? I think the most harmful thing for your trading could be it was when it was when I took a very big break from trading. I was inside my own head a lot. So I took a very big break from trading and to get back in I felt a lot of resistance. I was kind of second guessing everything. I think when I put my hands on the screen it just broke. Yeah, we're taking the hands out. We're not talking about my lips are hella chapped. Grossy. Um, it was when I was second guessing, you know, getting into a trade. I was overthinking. I was resistance towards it. There was resistance towards it. It was just um, overthinking, I guess, really is, is going to be like a, a super profit killer. If, if you get in and you don't overthink it and your strategy just says, get in. Your strategy says, okay, get in here. Put your stop loss here and put your take profit here. That's that. That should be it. Your strategy says do that. That's what you do. Now you don't sit here and watch it. You don't sit here and overthink it. You don't overanalyze it. Because what's crazy is your brain, if you start to watch a trade for so long, your brain will somehow see things differently. And it's it's crazy. It's it's super crazy, actually. There were times where I would I would get into a trade and not even think about it. I'd just be like, okay, this is what my strategy says says get in here i'm gonna get in here i'm just gonna do exactly what my strategy says and then sitting there watching the trade for so many hours zooming in zooming out looking at different time frames and then i'm like oh wait a minute was that a good idea i'm looking at the i'm looking at the daily and this doesn't look like a good idea or i'm looking at the i'm looking at the one hour and this doesn't look like a good idea so overthinking and over analyzing and looking at the charts for too long absolutely is a profit killer it almost is like you go into like this, um, you start hallucinating. <laughs> like you start seeing things that you didn't see before and your brain starts making different scenarios up. So I think overanalyzing and, and overthinking your trades that you've placed or just and staring at the markets for too long is definitely going to be a profit killer. have more hobbies um trading and cycling and i guess content creation those are like my three hobbies i like being in front of the camera i like making content i like um cycling I like indoor cycling I like outdoor cycling i liked racing i kind of miss racing i kind of miss it i do but i'm just so far away from being an athlete right now have to get back on like a, a training schedule. I'd probably have to get coached. Um, I don't know, but it sounds really fun. But then like, I don't know, racing is different nowadays and I think I would be intimidated by the women that are racing these days because I would, I'd have to like start fresh. I'd have to start over because my fitness is at uh, zero. Um, yeah, my, my mic gain is really low. I, I have it turned all the way up. Um, maybe I just don't know how to use this mic. It's a Shure. It's a creative collab. I, I'm not very good at it, but I think my face is going to be right here on the mic so you guys hear me pretty well. Um, Vincent, if you go to my community section on my YouTube page, I posted all my monthly stats. So you can see my win-loss ratio, you can see my win rate, uh, the whole nine yards. So check that out. 
and I'm going to be posting this month's um, trading stats as well, but I'm going to be waiting for the very last day. I'm waiting for all of December to be over, and then I will post my monthly stats. I use um, TradeZella for my trading journal. I have my TradeStation account synced to my TradeZella, and it automatically inputs all of my data. Also, if anyone has any tips for my camera settings, I really am so irritated that it is doing this weird focus thing. Um, I'm pretty sure I had it set to manual focus, but maybe I accidentally hit something. Maybe it's on autofocus and it just keeps trying to focus on a bunch of different random freaking things in my room. Um, Ali says, do you close your trades at the end of the day, or are there no screenings open for days? I keep my trades open. So, for the most part, a lot of my trading career has been a day trader. So I have been in and out of trades within the day. But then when I got into the futures market, and then I realized, you know, the futures market is open 24 hours out of the day, Monday through Friday, with the exception of just closing for one hour out of each day. Um, I ended up starting to hold my trades for a lot longer. Thank you, Rob. I appreciate that. Thank you. Um, so now I trade, I hold my trades for a lot longer. Now I hold my trades overnight sometimes, but if they, if they end up working out within a few hours, then I'll close them within a few hours. But there are a lot of times now, and it's very often, when I will hold my trades overnight or for um, a few days. So as far as exiting my trades, so I mentioned this in my last live. So entering my trades, I'm glad that was the suggestion. So it's when the price breaks out of either a trend line or a line of support resistance. And then as far as take profits or when you can close your trades, I will put my take profits at areas where the price tends to gravitate towards. Whether that's another trend line, whether that's another support resistance line, it's areas where the price tends to gravitate towards or prices where 
or points where the price has gone to and then turned around. So, for example, this trade that I have going here. Let's say that I am long right now. Where would I be taking the take profit? It would be in areas where the price has gone to and then turned around. So it could be somewhere around this 79.90 area would be a nice take profit. It could be somewhere around this downward trend line because last time the price came up to it, it fell down. Maybe the price is coming up to it again. It's going to fall down. So you're just looking for other points and other areas where the price tends to gravitate towards. So it could be this, this horizontal line here. Maybe you're going to hold it all the way here. But I would say I would probably put a take profit somewhere along this. <laughs> Sean, you made it. We're live. I think the reason you made it is because I have been live for over an hour now. Um, so I can read your camera and audio have been perfectly fine. I was going in between it. I appreciate it. Thank you. What camera are you using? I am using a Sony A6000. It is driving me effing nuts tonight. Small account or a big account? Um, I'm not sure if it's considered small or big, but it's a $25,000 account. Um, I do not have an S Corp or an LLC yet, but that is actually my goal uh, January. Um, she's going to help me with partnerships with social media. She's going to help me um, get an LLC, get my business stuff in order. Um, she's an amazing human being. She started out as my life and business coach and has been incredible. She's helped me get the motivation to be consistent on my social media. She's helped me come out with a, a plan for my social media, a, a posting schedule, a, um, a content creation content creation schedule. She's she's been awesome. So if you guys want to look her up, let me see if I can find her. Um, she's pretty cool. She's an awesome awesome life coach. Okay, her um, Instagram is Creative Life Coaching underscore. She's on Instagram. Um, my 7K loss, how much of it was of your capital at the time? So I, I keep a, a $25,000 capital at all times. Um, at all times. And then I will each month um, out of that and then I will build it back up to 25k or whatever I make on top of that I will take out each month so um, I had to I had to make that money back so when I took my seven thousand dollar loss that was out of my $25,000 capital I had to build 
back up before I started giving myself profit. If you go look at my stats, I don't I don't know offhand. Um, if you go look at my stats on my YouTube community channel, I mean on my channel on the YouTube community section, I, I post my stats and you'll be able to see all the trades that I post in a month. I just don't know offhand, I'm not sure. Oh, speaking of corn. Just 
this year is when I learned about prop books. Um, and next year, I am actually going to attempt a prop firm, um, or attempt to be a funded trader. We'll see how it goes. Um, it's something that I've never done before. So I'm excited to try it. It'll be cool to trade with, you know, much more capital than I trade with now. Um, I'm excited to see how it works. It's going to be, it's going to be a very interesting learning curve, though, because I do not use those same parameters in my trading now. I don't have all of these like I would in the challenge that I trade with now. So learning these new sets of rules and abiding by a new set of rules is going to be a little bit tricky. Um, so that's something that I'm going to have to figure out. Um, Michael said my average looks like it's about two to four trades a week. That sounds about right. Um, I trade a one hour time frame only. Almost as if I reversed my position. Um, I this futures account that I have, I don't believe offers leverage. Um, that's just not just not in the cards. I have traded with leverage before, though. So I have had a um, I have had a account in the stock market. So you know, you have to have twenty five thousand dollars in an account to be able to day trade. And so I would trade equities in um, in TradeStation, and I was able to you know trade like I was able to trade like multiple shares of Tesla, Amazon. Um, so I did have leverage. Only if I'm trading something new, because um, I basically kind of like do my research, or I do my, I study up on on an instrument if I'm just now new to trading. So let's say that I'm going to trade platinum. If I'm going to trade platinum, I am, I'm going to do my research on this, and essentially that means looking back at previous data, seeing what it's done in the past. So I get a very zoomed out time frame. I'll look at as much data as I possibly can. I will go ahead and mark up my chart, I'll put my trend lines and my support positions on the screen in a more zoomed out time frame, and then I'll work my way into the one hour. So once I've done my research, is what I kind of call it, I've done my research on, on an instrument, and I've seen kind of what it does in the past, then I'll move into my one hour.